graphical interface will get you going. But to tap into the real power of Linux, you'll want to use the command line. There's nothing like it. In this lesson, we look at how to access it and issue commands. Welcome, I'm Charles Kabuga. Now, command line interface allows us to pass instructions directly into the system. And these instructions are in a language that we can understand, for example, English, but the computer doesn't speak English. It only knows of zeros and ones. And therefore, the commands have to be converted into a form that the computer can consume. This is called interpretation and the service is provided by a shell program. There are many types of shell programs such as C shell, TC shell, K shell, and even Windows PowerShell. But the one that has seen widespread adaptation in Linux is the GNU Born Again shell or Bash in short. This is the default shell in Red Hat. Here, since we are at a GNOME graphical environment, we can't access Bash directly. We need another application to link us or interface us with the shell. And this application is called a terminal emulator. The default terminal emulator that comes with GNOME is the GNOME terminal. But of course, there are others like console, xterm, or even terminator. To launch it, go to activities and select terminal. This gives us access to bash and when the shell is waiting for commands like now, it displays this string here called the shell prompt. For regular users, the prompt ends with a dollar sign, but for the super user that is root, it ends with a hash sign. This is to differentiate them cause accidents while working as root can cause devastating damage to the system. At the prompt, try a command like who am I? One word, small caps. Okay. Command line interface can also be accessed via virtual consoles. Uh, virtual consoles are separate terminal sessions on the physical Linux machine. To access them, press and hold Ctrl plus Alt followed by any function keys from F1 through F6. If you have enabled graphical environment like in my case, the graphical login prompt is usually enabled on the first virtual console. That is Ctrl plus Alt F1. Here. Once you are successfully logged in, a graphical environment is created for you in the next available virtual console and you are redirected there while this first virtual console resumes the job of authenticating other users. Please take note this is new to Red Hat 8. Previous releases had a different arrangement. And since I had already logged in, I was transferred to the second virtual console. Control plus Alt F2. Here. Now press Control plus Alt F3. This is free. Let's log in as root. This is a text-only interface. Hope it's now clear what I mean by a graphical environment as compared to a text-only. To see who is logged in the system and from where, type W. User Kabuga and root are in the system and TTY2 and 3 corresponds to Virtual Console 2 and 3 respectively. Let's go back to the first Virtual Console. That is the graphical login prompt. Not listed and login as root. Guess where this graphical environment for root is created? Virtual console 1 is graphical login prompt, 2 is graphical by user Kabuga, 3 is text only by root. The next available virtual console is number 4. W again. C. TTY4. Later, you can try logging in in the other virtual consoles. Now, let's turn our focus to the instructions passed on at the prompt because they follow a certain syntax, usually with command, options, and arguments as the basic ingredients. Command represents the program installed in the system that you want to run or the actions you want to perform. So far, we have seen subscription manager, W and who am I, as examples of commands. To quickly type a command, make use of tab completion. How do you do that? Partly type the command, then press tab. For example, type sub, then press tab, and it will to complete for you. 
if the characters are not unique like in the case of SU, then press tab twice and it will show you all the options available. Commands may also be followed by options and they specify how you want the program to execute. They sort of change the behavior of the program. If you don't specify any, the command will run as default or even not run at all. They are usually differentiated using one or two dashes after the command. For example, to see the short format of the W command, type W dash S or W dash dash short. Multiple options can be combined together under a single dash. For example, to show the short format without the header, type W dash SH. This is the same as W dash S dash H. And lastly, arguments specify what the command operates on. Another example. To see where the root user is logging in from, in short format without the header, type W dash SH root. In this case, user root is the argument. W is just one among many commands that we'll encounter. Finally, there are key combinations that are very handy when typing commands. Let's have a command like subscription manager list dash dash available. If you want to add sudo at the beginning of the command, press ctrl A and it takes you to the beginning of the command. To jump to the end of the command, press ctrl plus E. Let's move the cursor somewhere into the middle of the command. To clear from the cursor to the end, press ctrl K. Now you can add other options. To clear from this point all the way to the beginning of the command, press ctrl U. Your turn now. Press ctrl plus left arrow and ctrl plus right arrow and observe what happens. Now, don't worry too much about mastering commands and options. We learn them in a context as we go and this way they stick. Plus, there are tools to assist us. We have come to the end of this lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think. In the next one, we look at the Linux file system hierarchy. Thanks for watching.